Here is the 2024 Dodge Hornet GT Plus with the track pack in blue steel over black interior, 20 horsepower less than the RT Plus, 88 pound-feet of torque less, sharing the same platform as the Alfa Romeo and parts bin out of Maserati. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Ride. Standard is going to have LED headlights and daytime runnings. Gloss black elements is going to be on the new face of the Dodge. It's going to be a little bit more sporty and this is basically a small Dodge Durango with a bit more sport essence to it because what's house underneath the hood is not going to be a Hemi. It's a 2.0 liter inline four-cylinder turbocharged. This is a Hurricane engine with 268 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque paired to a nine-speed automatic transmission achieving 21 mpgs for the city and 29 mpgs for the highway. Standard is an 18-inch wheel but because we have the track pack this is going to be a 235, 40, 20 on all four corners. Red brake calipers that's housing four pistons in the front. Now the only problem that I have right off the bat is this is a Dodge and you're getting performance just like a Maserati and an Alfa Romeo, especially when you go to the 1.3 liter turbocharged with a hybrid technology. It's a plug-in hybrid that has 383 pound-feet of torque with a 0 to 60 at 5.6 seconds and a top speed at 128 miles per hour. It's the same engine in the Alfa Romeo. Now the Maserati is going to be a 2.0 liter inline four-cylinder turbocharged, but you're still going to be around six seconds. So you can see what I mean by a deal. And because of the track pack, we have the dual mode suspension. So it's going to be sporty, a little bit more agile, or a little bit more forgiving. And when you're thinking rivals, this can compete with the Porsche Macan T, and you're gonna see a savings of over $20,000. In its segment, it's going against Honda, Toyota, Mazda, Subaru. Nobody's gonna be as fast as this for the same price, nor the same towing cap capacity. This is at 2,000 pounds with a payload at 1,245 pounds, eight horsepower more the Maserati Gracale will have than this on the base GT trim, and that's gonna cost near $70,000. This is at a his or her price now. LED taillights is standard with the light bar, so it's gonna look like a little Porsche, and the lower is not going to be as aggressive as the RT, will, which will have the dual exhaust outlets. We have the front and rear parking sensors and a 360 degree reverse camera but the problem that I have is this is the GT plus and it's a little bit more money now because we've added two packages than the RT that puts it with segments like Alfa Romeo and Maserati when you're considering adding any features in which this is still a Dodge power lift gate going into 27 cubic feet of storage which is over four cubic feet then the plug-in variant. It will sit up. That is to be expected for the sporty style. And the reason why you get that extra storage is because this can fold downwards. So you can see top to bottom just gives you a lot more so. 12 volt bag holders on both sides, no LED interior lights, and the privacy cover is very easy to remove. And a fun fact for that privacy cover, check out that badge. Alfa Romeo. And even the floor mats, it's the same as the Maserati, Fiat. I mean, this is a Dodge. Bose is a pass-through and a 20 split that will increase cargo to over 50 cubic feet. We need to go inside, start it up so you can hear that exhaust note. Because of that track pack, this is the Alcantara red and black seats, 12-way power seat adjustment for the driver and passenger, heated, but you will lose ventilated seats, memory for the driver. Headroom and leg room, it's going to be more sporty, driver focus, which means it's going to be a little tight and check it out. You lose a significant amount of space front to back. Leg space, you're gonna lose some here because this bulges out more, but you get a little storage cubby that you won't receive on the driver's side. 
with a 10.25 that comes out of the dash with wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM AM FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. Click into the vehicle in here. When it goes in there, you have the performance. This is one problem that I have right off the bat. There's a lot of glitch to the infotainment screen whenever you click any button. Even when I push the sport button here, it's still not engaged. Now it's, see, now it just turned on. I had to push it on twice. Put it into reverse and you have a 360 degree reverse camera because we have the tech pack in which you have different layouts and adaptive cruise control with lane keep assist. So it will drive for you autonomously for about 0.2 to 0.3 miles more flat dashboard layout, auto dimming rear view mirror, a large pano moonroof, wireless charging pad, 12 volt two USB ports, leather around the shifter, and I wanted to show you some more cool things. So this is the key fob for the Hornet, and look at the key fob for a Maserati. It's literally the same exact key, the only difference is Maserati adds the aluminum around it. Cup holders with the satin aluminum. This is pushed back a little bit and a little bit more soft. It is deep, just not as wide or long as I'd want it to be. Leather wrap steering wheel perforated right here where it needs to be. This would normally be the push button for the Gricale and the Alfa Romeo, but it's the sport button in which you only have two modes here. So sport off or sport on with a 12.3 digital reader that can go through an array of information for the driver you can toggle this through your driver assist, your performance, any messages or services that you would have. The dashboard and door panel configure and together. Harman Kardon 14 speaker upgrade. This is an aluminum inlay, so watch your fingers, soft to touch, and you'll have the vinyl that'll come into play. One touch up and down for all the windows and a medium sized storage pocket. For the back seats headroom, it's actually pretty good because this is not a full panel. It's just a moonroof. Storage is going to be behind both of the front seats. Air vents, USB ports, a large armrest with cup holders, and the door is going to have the same segment found in the front, except we're losing the aluminum. We're getting plastic. It's gonna be soft to touch and a beverage holder in the center. Sliding over, you're gonna be sharing some feet space because you can't really put them here butt, shoulder, and leg space. I like how this contours upwards so it gives a little bit longer of a length for tall people because when you're sitting in the center, look how much real estate you have. It's gonna make it a little bit undesirable for a long journey. Headroom though is more doable, 268 horsepower with 295 pound-feet of torque. It may not sound like a lot, but it's quite a bit when you're considering the size of this vehicle. When you think about a BMW, for instance, the X1 M35i, which is a new variant for 2024, you're getting 312 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. It's the same torque as this. Zero to 60, and that is at 5.2 seconds. When you option the RT+, Plus, you got 383 pound-feet of torque. That's what I mean by you can get a lot of power out of the Hornet. It's going to be a lot more sporty in the interior. The windscreen is also smaller. It's off the same platform as the Alfa Romeo, sharing a lot of parts out of Alfa Romeo and Maserati. So you'll see those badges, which makes it a little bit more fun because of the savings that you're getting. And that's another reason why I'm comparing this against like Porsche and those brands because of what the package all entails. In sport mode, it's ready to go because you're near 300 pound-feet of torque in which it is enough to motivate the vehicle. We're gonna start off with some pros and cons. Starting off with the pros, you get over four cubic feet more storage when you go to the GT+. Plus. The cons is once you start adding features, you're at the RT plus price. The infotainment screen, I like the 360 degree reverse camera. I would option the tech package whether I went this trim or up because when you get just the reverse camera that comes standard, it doesn't even cover up the whole screen. I like that we have physical buttons and it's pretty easy to operate the vehicle because of the way everything is, meaning you can just throw your phone on the wireless charger. You have wire wireless Apple CarPlay and the steering wheel is out of an Alfa Romeo and Maserati. I mean, what world do we live in that you're getting a 40-ish thousand dollar car at the price of 
variance that's over 60 grand. Another pro, four piston front brakes, so you can stop on a dime if you need to. I mean, it's not a track worthy vehicle, but just thinking of the price of everything that you're getting as a total package. I'm not a huge fan of some of the charms, especially the turn signal, and it's the same thing that's in the Maserati Cricale. I kind of would have liked to see that screen lay up here instead of having the 10.3 come out of the dashboard. Invisibility can be compromised because it is more sleek and small if you're tall, in which headroom becomes an issue in the back seat. Turn radius at a stop point is going to receive about two lanes. Let's rock and roll. And you can see what I mean by fast. It's another reason why it's hard to find a category for this vehicle, because Honda, Toyota, they just don't make something that has this much power, and yet you're still getting decent MPGs, and they offer a plug-in hybrid, which gets a lot better MPGs. And that takes me to the big problems that I have with the Hornet. When you option features, like I said on the exterior, you're gonna spend a lot of dough. And then you're going to lose some amenities in which I want the ventilated seats. That's why I went up to this tier. The seat itself isn't long enough. So for tall people, it does make it a little bit more tiresome. Your knees kind of sit up in the air. The technology lags in the infotainment. Also, when you're pushing the buttons to engage sport, non-sport mode, the semi-autonomous driving is good for maybe 0.2 tenths of a mile. And then it just kicks off for the steering assist. But then when I'm thinking about the deal that I'm getting, this is faster than a Porsche Macan T. This is just as fast as an Alfa Romeo and a Maserati. And I'm getting some of those parts in this at a 40-ish thousand dollar price point. I mean, let me know what you think in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Furman Dodge of Wesley Chapel for giving us this 2024 Dodge Hornet GT Plus for our car review.